Tanisha, can we get your thoughts on the Sunday Times uh, opinion poll that has Fine Gael uh, on their lowest ever mark in that particular poll, 20%, uh, 12 points behind Fianna Fáil. Doesn't make for a pretty reading. Yeah, look, I mean, I think this poll is going to act as a motivator uh, for Fine Gael people uh, and Fine Gael candidates right across the country. It's only, you know, two weeks earlier, uh, the same polling agency had Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael both on 27%. And for the last two years, uh, Fine Gael has been in the high 20s, early 30s in terms of polls. So, of course, we're going to take note of this. Um, I think it's going to motivate people to work harder, to sell our message, uh, to listen to people and to listen to voters because clearly, um, you know, uh, opinions are volatile uh, and we need to work hard. But there's, there's three weeks left in this campaign. Uh, uh, Fine Gael is a very, very strong and positive message to sell. Uh, the country today is in uh, an infinitely better place than it was uh, eight or nine years ago. People are back to work, uh, the economy is strong. We do have work to do in terms of public services, particularly around housing and healthcare, we know that. We're listening to people and, and their frustrations and their anger in, in relation to the pace of change in some of those areas. Uh, but I would say that um, this, this opinion poll, while of course um, Fianna Gael will take note of it, I think it'll act as a uh, uh, you know, as a catalyst to, to work harder um, and uh, to listen to people on the ground, which is what we're doing already. Thomas, do you think the RIC controversy had much of an impact on this poll? Um, I mean, I think it probably had. You know, this, this poll was taken um, before the election was called, actually. Uh, there was a controversy around um, the RIC proposed commemoration. Uh, clearly, people were uncomfortable with that. Uh, and I think it's important to acknowledge that. And I think we did acknowledge it. You know, we've, we've put it off. Um, uh, responding to, to people's concerns. Um, but look, we're in a general election campaign now, uh, which is about talking about the state of the country, the direction of the country, uh, and who is best placed to, to, to take the country uh, through the, the challenges that we face in the years ahead, from a Brexit point of view, from keeping an economy strong uh, perspective. Um, and I think this, uh, this government's record is very strong on the issues that matter, uh, while also recognising that we still have a lot of work to do, particularly around providing strong, quality public services for vulnerable people who need them. Uh, we're very aware of that uh, and we are seeing improvements in those areas uh, and we want the opportunity to be able to use the strong economy that Fine Gael has helped to build uh, to be able to solve those problems for people uh, in the next all term. And on to Brexit, what do you make of the UK uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer's, uh, Exchequer's comments uh, that Britain will soon not be in the single market, uh, that there will be no alignment, that they're basically pushing their own economy further and further away from Europe? Well, I think that's a reminder that Brexit is not done yet um, and that we're really only at the halfway point uh, in the Brexit negotiation and challenge. So we've got a good deal for Ireland uh, in terms of the withdrawal agreement that manages Britain's exit. Uh, in many ways, that's the divorce arrangement that protects key Irish interests uh, on the island, north and south. It prevents border infrastructure re-emerging uh, uh, and it protects the relationship between Ireland and Britain in terms of free movement of people and so on. But we, still, but, but, but we still, but yeah, but we, now. but we still know that uh, that there's a huge amount of work to do to get a permanent future relationship in place on trade and security, on fishing, on data, on aviation, and so much more besides. Uh, and we have a 70 billion euro trade relationship with the UK. We have about 37,000 Irish companies that trade with the UK every single week. Uh, and so Fine Gael, I think, has shown. Uh, that we have the capacity to negotiate the complexity of Brexit and get a good result for Ireland. Uh, and we need to do that in the second half of this game, just like we did in the first. And I would ask people to reflect on that. You know, we're, we're outside Thoman Park here, you know, about to go into a, a, a match. And if you want to use sporting parlance, you know, do you, do you change a team at half time when they've got a good result in the first half and they're looking to finish the job in the second half? What do you make of Green Party leader Eamon Ryan's comments about the M20 Limerick to Cork motorway, something that people down here are, are crying out for? He said it makes no economic sense. Well, I think maybe Eamon Ryan should spend a bit more time in, uh, in Cork and Limerick uh, to understand why this is a really, really strategic piece of infrastructure that people have looked for for decades uh, and are now going to get delivered. 
uh, through a Fine Gael government. You know, these, this is the second and third largest city in the country. We're trying to create a counterbalance to Dublin uh, in the south and southwest uh, and strategically linking Limerick and Cork, uh, ensuring that you can drive from one to the other in 45 minutes as opposed to an hour and 20 minutes uh, is what we're trying to achieve by putting this motorway infrastructure in place. It's also good from a climate perspective, in my view. It means less time on the road in your car. Um, more efficient uh, transportation and if we can get a, a million electric cars on the road that don't have to charge uh, between Cork and Limerick then I think we can do um, what's important for the environment but we can also allow commuters to move and we can build an alliance between Limerick and Cork from an economic development perspective uh, which I think will be really really beneficial for Limerick and Cork. Uh, I I guess. Guess. Speaking of the controversy in UHL given the overcrowding we, do, we just take one here, here David, you've had people, a few now. A lot of people locally are it's an question. important issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 a lot no. of people are asking for a change of team now to, to solve that crisis. What would you say to them? Well, look, I mean, you know, I am more than aware of the pressure that some hospitals are under, particularly in Limerick and in Cork, for that matter. You know, accidents and emergency uh, departments are under real pressure. That's why we need more beds, more staff, more investment. That's why we're investing more in Limerick now in terms of more beds. Um, so, you know, this government is absolutely uh, clear in terms of the challenges we face in healthcare. We need to, to, to continue to invest. We managed to get agreement across all political parties in terms of how to do that. I mean, the health strategy for the next 10 years is set. It's called Slauncher Care, but it needs a strong economy to be able to fund that change and that expansion uh, in terms of extra staff, extra beds uh, and better management. Uh, and that applies to Limerick just like it applies to Cork. Uh, on UHL, actually, Tomish, uh, I mean, back in 2011, Ender Kenny's one of his election posts stated will end the scandal of patients on trolleys. Yeah. Ten years later, there's almost 100 people waiting on trolleys at University Hospital Limerick. What's gone wrong? Well, I think, you know, the, the truth is that, you know, Fine Gael has been in government for the last nine years. For the first four or five years, uh, we literally had no money to spend. I mean, when we came into government, uh, effectively the country was bankrupt. Uh, the IMF was making a lot of the financial decisions in Ireland. Uh, we had just lost 356,000 jobs under Fianna Falls last three years. Uh, and so Fine Gael's focus had to be to rebuild an economy so that we could pay for the public services that we need to get people back to work. And since then, you know, over 400,000 extra jobs have been created in Ireland. We now, for the last three or four years, can afford to be able to make the dramatic investments that are needed in health to fix problems. And we've spent an extra 2.8 billion euros on healthcare in the last three years. And because of a strong, growing economy, uh, because of budget surpluses, we now can, I think, make uh, realistic financial commitments to be able to add the extra beds into the system, the extra staff into the system, to be able to fix once and for all the accident and emergency pressures that we're seeing in Limerick. All right, guys, is that okay? Well, yeah. I'll a light question for you. Uh, the last time uh, Leo Varadkar was in Limerick on the campaign trail for the European elections, he sang an ode to <laughs> Dolores O'Reardon. <laughs> some, some of the Fine Gaelers who are here today are looking for a seat. Have Listen. you a favourite uh, band yourself or you privy to the crowd? Well, well, well. Listen, I, I'm trying to win votes here, not lose them. <laughs> so I won't be. Franklin Walters. So I won't be. Uh, so I won't be singing today. But um, but look, I, I'm here. That gets you ready for the campaign. <laughs> Listen, I. <laughs> I'm here to support Munster today, uh, uh, like an awful lot of other people. It brings Cork and Limerick people together, and indeed people from from all over Munster. Um, you know, and it's a uh, the uh, when he's it's in a Limerick. bit of, it's a bit of light relief. Uh, you know, at the start of an election campaign, but make no mistake. Uh, this game has only just started um, from an election point of view. We've got three weeks left to go. Fine Gael intends on winning this contest. Right, Thank you very much. Thanks.